Given the way that you're thinking about consciousness, what do you think about other animals having consciousness? And what's your take on AI becoming conscious? Two super important and increasingly timely questions. I mean, there's so much excitement, hype, and some amount of anxiety and fear about AI. And, uh, and things are changing. Animals, of course, have been around for a very long time. Um, and we've had over history varying views about their status as conscious creatures or not. And I think they pose as very different challenges. So we humans, we tend to see the world through the lens of being human. You know, we're very anthropocentric. Um, and not only that, we're very anthropomorphic. We tend to project human-like things into other systems on the basis of what might be superficial similarities. So this is to say that when it comes to other animals, if they're different from us, we tend to withhold from them things that we think are distinctively human or matter to our humanity, like intelligence and consciousness. And I think it's this combination of biases that, that can get us into trouble here. Because we see things through a human lens, we've tended over history to associate something like consciousness with other things that we think of as distinctively human, like intelligence and language. So if we do that and we look at non-human animals, we tend to reserve consciousness for those animals that seem the smartest. And in fact, you know, we've done worse than that. It wasn't that long ago that people didn't give babies anesthesia. I mean, this oh. seems crazy now, but the, but it was not common practice until a few decades ago. Um, it was this sort of assumption was they didn't really feel pain. And I think that just shows how deeply our assumptions like this can affect our practice. Yeah. Um, and we have exactly the opposite situation now with artificial intelligence. So AI systems like ChatGPT or Claude can speak to us fluently, whether it counts as conversations, I'm, I'm much less sure. I mean, Sherry Turkle has said, talked about this beautifully and said, when we converse with a machine, we unthinkably simplify what we mean by a conversation. It's a different form of human machine interaction. But because words are being exchanged and some of the things that language models can say you know, really are quite surprisingly articulate and informative, we tend to project qualities like consciousness into these machines because if it was a human being talking to us like that well that human being would clearly be conscious but it's not it's something very 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 different so i think the first thing we have to do is recognize how much our our intuitions about the the circle of consciousness how far these intuitions are shaped by our biases and that we can't just crawl out from under them. You know, we can't get away from them. These biases might be uh, what we might call cognitively impenetrable, like some visual illusions. You know, There are some illusions that even when you know two lines are the same length, they will always look different. You know, this is the Muller-Lyer illusion. So even if we know we're biased in these anthropocentric ways, we will still be unable to resist these intuitions. So we need to just surface that. And then ask the question, so what is, what's actually most likely the case? And here, I think there's extremely good reason to believe that consciousness is pretty widespread in non-human animals. If you look through all mammals, whether it's a tree shrew or a, or a orangutan, they have the same basic neural architecture that we know is important in human beings for consciousness. I think things get really tricky when we look at birds, when we look at fish, when we look at insects. And here, I just think we have to, we can't be determinants. We don't know one way or the other, but we just need to keep updating our credence in consciousness in these things. And I think the key thing is, is we also have to ask, well, what kind of consciousness matters? It may well be the case that not many non-human animals have fully developed, reflexive, reflective experiences of being particular individuals. I mean, we don't know yet, but, but it seems unlikely. But ethically, what matters is whether they have the capacity to suffer, to feel pain. Um, this is a very utilitarian perspective, but I think it's a sensible one. So I think we underestimate probably 
the extent of animal consciousness. And I think we overestimate the likelihood of AI being conscious. And there are many reasons why I'm very skeptical of this. But fundamentally, my my great basis for the skepticism is I think we've just overused the metaphor of the brain as a computer. It's a mm. beautiful, brilliant, powerful metaphor, but it it's a metaphor. We've always used the dominant technology of the day as a metaphor for the brain. And we always get into trouble, or we usually get into trouble, when we start confusing a metaphor with the thing itself. <laughs> 